Are you looking to move Microsoft workloads into the cloud? I'm Tim Addison from the AWS Migration Specialist team. And today we're here to talk about uh, how you would go about moving Microsoft workloads to the cloud. Uh, according to IDC, something like 85% of server workloads are still on-prem. And the vast majority of those are, in fact, Microsoft workloads, which will be coming across in the next three years. So with me today, I've got Carl from version one, who are one of our uh, key migration partners. Would you like to introduce yourself, Carl? Sure. Thanks, Tim. Uh, so Carl Adarty, I'm the principal of Microsoft licensing consultant at version one. My role within version one is helping, to helping our customers to understand uh, their Microsoft license position, help them to right size their investment in Microsoft licensing. Been working in Microsoft licensing for close to 20 years, so very much institutionalized at this stage. And version one are one of the key AWS partners uh, for migration uh, workloads. So um, you know it's um, it's super important that we that we stay close on these topics. Just to start off and to get right into this, um, a common question I get from customers is: Is it possible to run Microsoft workloads such as Windows Server, SQL Server, SharePoint, and so on within the AWS cloud? Yeah. So I think. A lot of customers overlook this one and, and they forget that you know there's millions of customers already doing this with AWS and they've been doing it with AWS for quite a number of years. In fact, I think AWS have probably been doing this longer than a number of other cloud service providers that are out there in the market. What are the benefits for customers wanting to bring Microsoft workloads into AWS? After all, there's numerous cloud vendors out there, so why bring them specifically to AWS? Yeah, so, so let me have a think about that one. So in terms of benefits, there, there's a number, right? So price, performance, um, availability, the sheer number of services that are available. Um, I think experience and knowledge is key. Um, and then I'd also say um, modernization options that exist out there are quite good, right? Um, and I think what, what underpins these benefits are the investments that AWS have made in various different programs over the last number of years to help customers successfully migrate to the cloud. So things like MAP, uh, things like OLA, which we're obviously here to talk about today. Skills Guild is another one. Um, I, I... And then there's a range of modernization programs, things like AML, for example, uh, that we can bring to bear to help customers modernize, yeah. Uh, I think one other thing to say, Carl, is that the, just the experience that AWS has got. You know, the first Windows service was launched back in 2008, so way before the other cloud vendors uh, had Windows services. So that's you know 14 years of, of running wi Windows uh, in the cloud. Uh, and as our CTO, Werner Vogel, says, there is no compression algorithm for experience. So I think, for me, that's one of the key differentiators for AWS. What about uh, customers that are already using Microsoft on-prem? They've already got an investment in an enterprise agreement and Microsoft licenses. Can you bring those licenses into AWS? There's a very long answer to this question. I'll give you the, the shortest possible version of it. So there's, there's a couple of options that exist. And I think it's really important that customers realize that it's not fully dependent on having software assurance. So if you have software assurance, there's options that exist. If you don't have software assurance, there's, soft, there's options that exist. But I think it's really important that customers realize that Microsoft licensing can be a dark art and complicated. And that's where working with a partner like version one really comes into play because we've got that depth of experience and knowledge around Microsoft licensing and being able to help customers navigate complex licensing terms. So there are options out there, but you know it's really good to get a deep understanding as to what they are and what are the implications of each of those options. Yeah, I think dark arts is a good way of describing it because um, you know I think we all know that Microsoft licensing is not the easiest thing to get your head around. So any help that we can provide to help customers navigate through that is a is going to be a good thing. What about Azure Hybrid Benefit (AHB)? Um, what is that, and uh, can can customers take advantage of that within AWS? I mentioned software assurance. A AHB is a software assurance benefit that's exclusive to Azure. It, it doesn't apply to AWS, so it's really important to call that out. But like any licensing program benefit, it's going to have risks and it's going to have benefits. And you really need to understand what those risks and benefits are because if it isn't fully thought through, there is a there is potential where some customers might actually create licensing waste within their organization, or they may fall afoul of Microsoft's licensing terms as well. So really important that you understand the implications of that benefit. 
So what about customers that are, um, you know, they're, they're on traditional uh, proprietary software today, so Windows, Oracle, SQL, and so on, but they want to not only move to the cloud, but take advantages of some of the modern cloud-based architectures. So um, what, what are some of the things that version one and AWS can help with to um, help customers modernize their applications? Yeah, so, so over the last number of years, we've seen AWS make investments in various different programs to enable partners to take various different workloads to AWS. So we see investment funding around moving SQL to non-SQL workloads, SQL to Aurora, um, or .NET to .NET Core, for example. Um, and then uh, that leads me on to my uh, penultimate question, which is um, what about uh, servers that are out of mainstream support? So, you know, SQL Server 2012 is out of support July of this year. Um, 2008 Windows Server and SQL Server are already out of support. What can we help customers with who are in, in that situation? I think there's there's a couple of ways of looking at this, right? So you've you've got some customers who will go the license included route. So you'll go license included for Windows Server and for SQL Server. And where you go that route with AWS, there is an option to avail of extended security updates for specific versions, right? So it's important to call it specific versions because yeah. versions will eventually go completely end of life at some point in time. Some organizations will have invested in on-premise licenses um, with ESUs from Microsoft. I don't know if you're familiar with ESUs. It's a extended security updates, I think they're called, and I believe they're quite expensive as well. Very good, that's it, you got it in one. So if you've made an investment in ESU um, and you have an opportunity to BYOL, the licenses that, that ESU is attached to, there's also potential to reuse those on AWS as well. But again, it's really important that you understand the implications of what you're trying to do before you go and actually do it. Yeah. Um, one other thing I was going to say, Tim, is that you know, we look about security running end of life or extended support products and getting access to those extended security updates. But one of the other trends that we see customers doing, when they get that visibility within their estate of what legacy operating systems or SQL workloads are running, it really provides a, a great opportunity to identify where there's modernization opportunities. I think you've given a really good run through of the options that uh, existing Microsoft on-prem customers have got for moving to AWS. How do you get started? So a great starting point is with a, an OLA or an optimization license assessment. Um, as we both know, it's a methodology best practice or be best practice methodology, should I say, um, that allows customers to assess and optimize their on-premise and cloud environments using a combination of data-driven insights, third-party licensing insights, as well as dependency information. Um, one thing that's really important to call out, it's what I call a low-touch engagement. Um, so that means that the IT organization can focus on the day job. Um, it isn't a labor-intensive project by any means. Um, and the good news is that it's a fully funded engagement subject to the necessary approvals. And of course, no obligation to the customer as well. So thanks, Carl. It's been great uh, having you here with me today, running through the various options. So uh, what we've done uh, in the last few minutes was to run through how you can migrate Microsoft workloads into AWS. Uh, along the credits that we'll be running shortly, you will see a link to a website that you can go to for more information. The other thing you can do is email ola at version1.com and one of our team will be in touch to take the conversation further. Thanks again, Carl. It's Thanks. been great having you.